Hey guys, um, this next video here is going to be a little bit different. Uh, we're working on exponents and the topic for our notes is we are in 1.4b and today's essential question that we want to practice is can I evaluate expressions with exponents? So you should have watched the prior video already where you took notes on how to do some exponent problems but in this video we're going to totally just practice it because this is where people make lots of little mistakes. Even I included tend to make little mistakes on this and have to be kind of cautious when I go through my work. So this is our practice video and it's okay if you have a calculator handy. In fact, I would recommend having a calculator, It'd probably a good idea. Um, and here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go through three rounds of practice problems where I'm gonna give you some questions, you're gonna pause the video and try them, and then you're gonna unpause the video and see if you're getting them right or wrong. This is a great way to kind of give yourself that practice that you need to make sure you feel comfortable with these. And like I said, sometimes it takes some time. So if you make some mistakes, learn from them. Let your brain grow. Let that be an opportunity for you. So underneath here, uh, I'm going to switch pages so I have more room to write. I'm going to give you your first two questions. So here they are, A and B. Go ahead and write these down. Negative 4 squared, so negative 4 to the second power. In parentheses, negative 5 cubed, negative 5 to the third power. Right now, I want you to pause your device, try both of these problems, and when you're running, we'll see if you can get them right. Go. Okay, are you ready to check your answer? Let's see how you did. So these are two different questions, no parentheses and parentheses, so we got to pay attention to that. When there is no parentheses, negative 4 squared means we have a negative, and then we have 4 squared, 4 times 4. So what I like to do is not think about the negative and just think about the 4 times 4. I don't need a calculator for that. 4 times 4 is 16. So remember there was that negative sign? Well, the answer is negative 16. So I'm going to write equals negative 16. How'd you do? Did you get it right? Did you get the negative sign? Probably you got the 16. Sometimes people accidentally do 4 times 2 and they say 8. They make the mistake of multiplying instead of squaring, so be cautious of that. And then here's the second problem. This one does have a parentheses. So when it's to the third power and there's a parentheses, that means there's one, two, three parentheses. And inside is negative five, negative five, and negative five. So I'm going to go in order. I'm going to do the first two numbers here. Um, I happen to know five times five is 25. But I also know that a negative and a negative make a positive 25. It's a, it's a match. They're, they're the same. Remember our match rule? So these match, so that's a positive. That's a good thing. But I still have this thing. I still have this other negative 5. I haven't dealt with that number yet. So now I'm going to do 25 times negative 5. Well, 25 times 5, 25, 50, 75, 100, 125. So it's 125. But this is a positive, this is a negative, that doesn't match up, that's a bad match, so that makes it a negative answer. A positive times a negative is a negative. So our answer is negative 125. Negative 125. Again, how'd you do? Did you get it right? Did you make any mistakes? How about how did you show your work? Because if all you have is this written down, the answer, well, that's not proficiency. That doesn't prove that you understand what's going on. You need the evidence. You need this. You need your steps. So make sure you're organizing those steps and showing that work. That's pretty crucial and important. Okay, round two. Here we go. Your next one is question C and D. Negative parentheses, 6 to the fourth power, and negative 2 to the fourth power. All right. Again, pause the device and give this a shot. Good luck. All right, are you ready to check your answer? Have you finished the problem? I hope you have, I hope you're ready to go. So here we go, we're gonna go through each of these. So this one's a little tricky. It's six to the fourth power, there's a parenthesis, and then there's a negative outside of it. So what that means is we have a parenthesis to the fourth power, so there's gonna be four of them. Let's see, one, two, three, four. There's gonna be a six in each of these. And then this negative that's out in front is still sitting out in front. In fact, I'm kind of forgetting about it and just going to ignore it and work on my math here. 6 times 6 is 36. But I also have this 6 times 6, which is 36. 
So now my job is to multiply 36 times 36 and that negative sign that I'm forgetting about, it's still sitting right there. It's out in front. Um, let's grab a calculator. What is, I don't know, 36 times 36 off the top of my head? Maybe you do. Did you get 1296? 1296. Okay, so 1296, but that negative sign that's out in front is still out in front. It's right there. There we go. So our answer is negative 1,296. Okay, next one. No parenthesis on this one. Negative 2 to the 4th. That means we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, four of them. And then the negative sign is just there. So again, forget about the negative. Work on the 2s. We know 2 times 2 is 4. And we know 2 times 2 is 4. And we know 4 times 4 is 16. But remember, I said forget about the negative. So it's just kind of sitting here the whole time out in front. So it's not really 16. It's negative 16. Negative 16 is our answer. So I'm going to write equals negative 16. So check yours. Check mine. Again, look at how much work I'm trying to show. Like I'm not doing this all in my head. Uh, a lot of people try to do it all in their head, and that's, that's great if you can get the right answer, but if it's all happening up here, nobody sees your process, so get whatever's going on in your head or whatever you're putting into your calculator, get that on your paper, show your evidence, show your work. That's, that's really, really important, you guys. Okay, last round. Let's see. I'm going to give you some hard ones here. E and F. Let's try a fraction. Two-fifths squared. I'm going to let you struggle and see if you can figure that one out. And f is negative 3, parentheses negative 3 to the 7th power. Go ahead and hit the pause button on your device and see if you can figure these ones out. Okay, you ready to check? You all finished up? I hope you are. Um, oh, we're going to see how you did. So I'm going to start with the fraction one first. Remember, parentheses squared mean we have parentheses times parentheses. There's two of them. And inside would be 2 fifths times two-fifths. Okay, well, it's a multiplying fraction problem. I like multiplying fractions because multiplying fractions is easy. You just go straight across. Two times two is four. Five times five is 25. And we've got our answer, four twenty-fifths. I would simplify it if I could divide it down, but four only divides by two or four, and 25 divides by five. I don't think I can, and there's no negative signs. So I think our answer is just, uh, uh, 4 25ths. I wrote that weird. There we go. 4 25ths. What'd you get? Did you get the same thing or were you stuck or did you do something different? Hopefully you didn't accidentally like butterfly it or something. The butterfly method, that's adding and subtracting fractions. Multiplying, you just get to go straight across. It's really nice. You don't even need a common denominator. So, so that's, that's nice too. Okay, let's look at F. Negative 3 to the 7th power. It's parentheses. So we're going to do 1, 2, Three, four, five, six, seven. Oh my gosh, this is long. I'm going to scoot this over so you can see it. Okay, so inside is a negative three, 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 and a negative three. The deal on this one is just to go slow and careful. So I'm going to do the first number here, negative three and a negative three. Let's see, three times three is nine. And a negative and a negative match up, so it's going to make a positive 9. So that's going to be the first one. I'm going to match these two up, and I'm going to say 3 times 3 is 9. And a negative negative is a positive match. I'm going to match these two up. Negative 3 times negative 3, again, is a positive 9. And then there's nothing to multiply this by, so I'm just going to bring it down. Negative 3. And we're still multiplying. So now I get to do 9 times 9. Well, 9 times 9 is 81. Positive and a positive is a match, so it's still a positive 81. I get to do 9 times 3, which is 27. A positive negative is not a match. That's a bad match, so that's a negative. And now I'm down to my final step. 81 times negative 27. Well, they don't match, so I know my answer is negative. I don't know 81 times 27 off the top of my head, so I'm going to grab a calculator here and do 81 times 27 equals... 2,187, 2,187, and there's our answer. Wow, okay, so how did you do? Did you get negative 2,187? Because that's our solution. Check and see how you did, and notice, man, notice all the work I'm trying to show, what I'm doing here. 
Now, you might have done your process differently. You might not have done your work exactly the same as me. Maybe you did three times three, and then you times it by the next three, and then you times it by the next three. Maybe you just went straight across, and that's fine. You should still end up with the same answer at the end, but whatever you did, you got to write it down, and you got to show it in your steps. All right, guys, so that wraps up this video. I just want to make sure you had some practice time with these positive and negatives. Um, if you made any mistakes, go back and reflect on them. It would be a great thing to do in your notebook is on that left-hand side where you have your main ideas. You could kind of go back, and if you made any mistakes, you could kind of write yourself a note what not to do or something like that. That would be a good reflection piece. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in class soon. Hope you have a good day. Bye.